four. Hey, that's me. Uh, my name is Spoonie. I've also got on commentary with me the absolutely wonderful, the RPG chick who ran Legend of Mana earlier this week. Oh, hi. And today we are going to be running Final Fantasy IV Paladin Percent. So for those of you who don't know what Paladin Percent is, basically it was created originally as an entry run for people wanting to get into running Final Fantasy IV, but a little bit scared of the no CW or any percent runs. They are a little bit intimidating. I still haven't done one myself, but basically it goes up to the point where Cecil becomes a paladin. That's it. You walk up to the top of Mount Ordeals, you fight yourself, and you win, sort of. Well, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get this thing started in three, two, one, go. Now, something that you might notice that's a little bit special about this particular run is that the RPG chick and I have some very exclusive Final Fantasy 100% accurate lore yes. that you've never heard anywhere else. This lore is completely canon, by the way. It is. I mean, the ship doesn't have any cannons, I don't think. No, it does! You know what? All of those cannons, they represent the very canon lore. I don't care if it has an extra N, it does. <laughs> Um, so basically, Final Fantasy IV starts off with us playing as Cecil, the main protagonist of the game. And our king, King of Baron, has sent us on a quest to go to a town full of wizards and punch them until they give us their shiny, shiny crystal. Sounds, uh, sounds great, right? <laughs> yeah, it's totally fine. It's exactly what you would want in a protagonist. So Cecil does that. They, um kill a lot of innocent Mycidians, they get the crystal, and everything is completely fine, right? They just they just go on their way, nothing bad happens. Oh, except for monsters. We're gonna be coming back to that later, though. We're not worried about the monsters now because we have these really awesome JP items, and Cecil's just like, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, you'll just see, you know, lovely things like the firebomb. Uh, you know, you're gonna see... What is... I think Cecil... Does he use Dark Wave here? No, he uses Lightning Bolt. Yeah, that's right. Another JP-only item that you'll never see again. I hope you liked it while it was here. <laughs> we are playing the original US Super Nintendo version of the game, so we're missing a few cool things. But that's all right. We make up for it with how totally awesome Kane is, right, RPGC? Yeah, Kane is the best. You'll see him later. He's our best friend who never betrays us. Honestly, uh, when I was a little kid and this game first came out, Kane was actually my favorite character. <laughs> I also really liked Kane, and then everything happened and I got really sad. <laughs> so we're returning to the Castle of Baron. We're meeting with Bygone, or as I like to call him, let Bygones be Bygones. And he's leading us to the King of Bannon, and you know, we're gonna be like, hey, you know what, I said Bannon, but I meant Baron. Anyway, we're gonna be talking to this king guy. He doesn't really care about us, as you'll see. We're gonna hand him this crystal. He's gonna be like, oh yeah, thanks for that there shiny, Cecil. Om nom nom, I'm basically Gollum with shiny crystals. And then we're gonna be like, hey, so your majesty, um, here's the thing. I had to kill a lot of innocent people to get that crystal. Are you sure we're doing the right thing? And... The king, in his very kingly manner, says, mm, oh, How dare you question me, Cecil? Mama, 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 mama. I'm gonna send you on a quest. And uh, then he gives us a totally not mysteriously ticking box. And he sends our best friend Kane with us. And we're supposed to deliver this box to the town of Mist. Don't worry, totally safe. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, just because it's ticking doesn't mean anything bad, right? Yeah, what if it just has a really happy, fun clock in it? Ooh, happy, fun clock. I want one of those. Me too. It's at this point in the game, by the way, where we finally have control over Cecil. Everything else is in a cutscene format. So the first thing that we're gonna do is come grab this tent. We'll need that later. And then we are going to avoid exploring at all in Bannon Castle. We're gonna avoid picking anything else up. Why? Because it is faster. 
And as we come down this way, we're gonna meet Rosa, who's basically Cecil's Bay. They are an item. And she's like, hey, I thought I heard the king yelling. What happened? And you know, Cecil's tired. He just came back from slaughtering a bunch of innocents. So he says, I'll tell you later. We also meet Sid, who has an amazing beard. Unfortunately, we won't see him again this run. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're just, you know, gonna go upstairs and uh, we're gonna go to sleep in our armor, like we do. Excuse me, this is a JRPG pro tag, so our sleeping in armor is a complete must. Mm hmm. You never know when you're gonna get attacked. Exactly. So it's late at night. We're thinking out loud to ourselves, like you do. I, I always like to imagine Cecil going, Man, you remember that time 10 years ago when I agreed to be a dark knight? Was that a mistake? <laughs> So we tell Rosa about what happened. She can tell that we feel terrible. And she says, oh goodness me, that, that is awful. And he tells her about how the king has ordered them to go to the town of Mist. She says, oh gosh, you better be careful. And Cecil says, don't worry, our BFF Kane's coming with us and you know how reliable and wonderful he is. So Rosa goes, okay, <sighs> yeah, that gives me some relief. You'll be all right. And that's pretty much the beginning of Final Fantasy IV. That's what sets it off. Murdering innocents, stealing a crystal, and going to the town of Mist, where nothing bad will happen. Nope, not ever. Let's go. So now we're going to get into about a two-minute long scroll of text that tells you, kind of setting up the world of now what's happening in Final Fantasy IV. So, um, while we're doing that, though, now would be a great time to get a donation or two in. Oh, we definitely have some donations. Thank you, everyone, for all of your support. We have a, a long one. I'm going to give it my best. We have $100 from Balthazar, who says, Hey, Spoonie, here's a little something from the Bards and Team Altair. Quick question. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you you what you could you do you what you want to you you could so do you you do you could you you want you want him to, to do you so much you could do anything part sasso and donation to spoonie's choice we also, thanks for that bell <laughs> we also have 50 dollars from jessica and jared who say had to donate while spoonie was running best of luck spoonie proud of you and thank you thank to you. everyone with flame fatales for raising money for an incredible cause thank you all so much <laughs> and we have 50 dollars from jack mango who says you spoony bard a great cause and a great runner punch wizards take names throw trash idk keep rocking it all right i have one very important question at the end of this though why do the monsters keep increasing Exactly. We need to know the Why? answer to this chat. We need to know your answer to this. What's the answer? Tell us through your donations to the Malala Fund. <laughs> Once upon a time, just so you have a little bit of context, when uh, the last Paladin percent tourney was going on, the monsters kept increasing because certain players weren't getting sub two in uh, no CW. <laughs> Uh, so you may have noticed the first thing I did there was open my menu. Basically, we're just going to immediately increase the attack speed and the battle speed because it's faster. And then we're going to go get our lovely friend Chocobo. Please enjoy this heckin' bop for about 10 seconds. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> Good, because unfortunately we don't get to hear it again. Oh, but I like the Chocobop. I do too. <laughs> we should just have Chocobo percent. Oh, I'm about it. How long can we listen to the Chocobo music? Forever. <laughs> so now we're walking our way through the Cave of Mist here. Obviously, this is a JRPG, so the fastest thing to do is to run away from every single battle. 
There is something in this game called back attacks, which I'm sure those of you who've played Final Fantasy are probably familiar with, but there's a small chance upon random battle that the enemies will attack us from behind or surprise us and get to go first. That's bad because it's slow and also they can kill you. Yeah, there's also um, a way to do step manipulation in this game to kind of decrease your encounters. But the way that the run works for Pally Percent, it is fully possible to get a really, really good time, as Boonie has showed, without doing any step manipulation. And step manipulation is a pain in the butt anyway. It really is. I don't want to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> So here we are fighting the Mist Dragon, who is yelling at us to go back. Much like return the slab. So we're just gonna slap the Mist Dragon around a couple of times here. Uh, once we're back on Cecil's turn though, we're gonna wait because the Mist Dragon, funny how that works, turns into mist. If you happen to attack the Mist Dragon when it has turned to mist, it's bad news bears. So instead, we take the time to do some inventory management and swap some stuff around for a glitch we're gonna do a bit later. And then we will wait patiently until he says, now get ready to fight! And then go back to slapping the Mist Dragon. Yeah, ideally you wanna get through this fight in um, two rounds of the Mist Dragon being solidified, so to speak. But sometimes RNG is not our friend. <laughs> It really depends on what you roll for damage on Kane and Cecil. I'm hoping that we have enough here. I'm gonna hold A and pray. Yeah! Winning today. That's good. <laughs> All right, so the Mist Dragon is down. All right, so something I'm going to be doing that I don't normally do in my PV runs is we're gonna be making a lot of safety saves because this game does have an awful lot of RNG. And I am doing that right now because we're about to do something called Mist Skip, which is a required glitch in order to do Paladin Percent. But basically, we're gonna be shifting the map over one square by confusing the heck out of the game. Yeah, this is a we're also gonna really handy glitch. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'ma just uh, do a thing. Also, I'ma back up because I almost saved over my safety save and that would be very silly of me. All right, so we're gonna reload here and then, oh uh, man, we're on top of mist. I guess we better go right. There you go, that's mist skip right there. So uh, to explain a little bit more, basically the game only wants you to enter from the left side because when you do, Stuff happens, uh, you'll see. But here we're also going to sell a shield for way, way, way more money than this man probably has in his life savings. Don't worry about it, it's a dupe glitch. Uh, would you like to tell everybody a little bit more about how that works, RPGC, while I'm grabbing this other stuff? Uh, I don't know the technicalities of how the <laughs> how the how it, the dupe glitch works. Well, I can words too. <laughs> I just know that it works, it's super easy to do, and uh, it gets us those dancing daggers. It does. So basically, we use Mist Skip, we use something called a dupe glitch, which basically we confuse the game into underflowing an item. In this case, I used Cecil's old shield, and it thinks that we have, what is it, like 250? No, it's like more than that, isn't it? I think it's you 250. Can do it, so it's, I thought it was 255. It might be 255, I don't quite remember. I'm sure somebody who's more familiar with the technicalities of that can probably correct me if I'm wrong. But we use that, we sell it, you know, we like walk into a town, we sell a guy absolutely nothing for all of his life savings, and now we're going to walk in here, step on the flag tile, and we're going to set his entire town on fire. But are we the bad guys, RPG scene? No, of course not. This is totally fine. Totally fine. No. Mm -mm. no, burning down a man's village after you just stole his life savings by threatening him unless he bought a stack of nothing. Oh yeah, and now, by the way, this is Rydia. She's another wonderful character in this game. She just watched her mom die. And uh, now we're going to proceed to basically torment her for the rest of the run? She's like six years old. 
But she's so cute. Why would you want to torment her? She is her? cute. <laughs> she's also a summoner, and she's going to summon Titan, who's got, like, abs on abs on abs on abs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so the town's on fire, and then she causes this massive earthquake. And the town of Mist will no longer be accessible to us in the run. It's gone. It was never here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so technically all that all that stuff that Spoonie picked up, the dancing daggers, the tiara, the change rod, that's really not stuff you're supposed to be able to access until after you get the airship and you're able to return to the town of Mist. Exactly, which is quite a bit later, so we have an extreme advantage over any of the bosses we fight right now. You know, RNG is still going to give us a good run for our money, but we've got daggers. So we're going to be taking Rydia, who we found unconscious, to the town of Kaipo so that she can hopefully get some rest and feel better. Our BFF Kane, though, is mysteriously vanished. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah. You could even say that uh, as a dragoon, he jumped and ran. <laughs> okay, that was good. I like that. <laughs> So we're going to go to sleep in our armor again because, you know, you never know when you're going to get attacked as the protagonist, as we mentioned earlier in the game. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, oh, what's that mysterious sound? Look, everyone. It's a pair of guards wanting to kill us. See, I told you. Gotta be prepared, man. We're also going to use something called run buffering, uh, which I didn't quite get the third uh, soldier to not attack me, but that's all right. It doesn't really matter in this circumstance too much. But basically run buffering allows you to pause your enemy's ATB or the bar that charges up for them to attack. And sometimes it lets you get your turn in a little bit faster than them. That's gonna be really important for at least a couple of different things in this run. While we're chatting, by the way, we have crossed ninety-five thousand dollars raised for charity. Chat, this is amazing. Oh, Please keep it up though, because I know we've got some incentives at one 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 one, and then as well, keep in mind we're still trying to meet that VVV VVV incentive. We have made some incredible progress toward it, but we still have a ways to go. So please keep those donations coming in. Oh heck yeah, you're awesome, Chad. Keep it up. Thank you all so much for donating to the Malala Fund, seriously. Um, so what basically all you missed there is I gave Rydia that tiara that we picked up and missed because she's very squishy and that will help her live. And also we moved her so she'll be in the back row. Now we're going to talk to our girlfriend, Rosa, who's passed out and says, mm, Cecil, don't leave me, Cecil, immediately leaves. I'd still like to know how Rosa got here with the, with the area by mist closed off. I don't know. I just think that she is magic. Hmm. Okay, I'll accept that answer. But yeah. All right, so we are going to walk up this way and we're going to go to yet another cave. While we're heading to caves, is now a good time for donation? So you want me to hold off for a little it bit? It is. Oh, yay, awesome. I've got a really nice one here, $25 from Mr. Game and Shout, who says, best of luck to Spoonie running one of the many Final Fantasy games that I need to catch up on someday. Tarbunny asked for a donation in honor of a female educator who meant a lot to us, and I didn't even have to think twice. My high school chemistry and physics teacher, Mrs. Dyke, was one of my all-time favorite teachers. She did amazing work to encourage a love of the sciences in myself and my classmates, and I'm so grateful to have studied under her. That is such a sweet one. Thank you so much, Mr. Game and Shout, for that donation. We also have $25 from Failed Uplink, who says, I love FF4 and supporting Malala Fund. Here's a donation to do the things the hard way in VVV, VVV. 
And chat, yes. like I said, we're making progress, but we only have this run to meet it. That is not a lot of time because Kuni goes fast. So we still need about $2,300. Please keep these donations rolling in. I really, really want to see that achievement. Please meet that. Let's do it. Let's hit it. By the way, <laughs> chemistry and physics teachers hype. Yes. So um, pretty much all that's happened in this particular cave as we are on the way to go try to find something to help Rosa is we meet up with this old guy named Tella who's a sage and he says, oh, hey, so my daughter Anna is in this city of Damsian and uh, basically she ran away to be with some bard. I don't know. I really don't like the guy. So I'm going to go uh, bring her back. And Tella's like, oh, well, I guess if you're going through here, then maybe we can help each other out because this cave is dangerous. We take a little nap. We have a little conversation with Tella. I'm going to be honest. I don't really, really remember what he says there because I always button mash there while well speed running. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing super special. It's about how Anna ran away with this dude. And he needs to go find her. That's pretty much it. Just... <laughs> Yeah, I ran away with some guy. Oh, our first surprise attack. We're one. I knew it. It's because I was thinking to myself, we haven't had a back attack yet. That's really surprising. Hey, well, better, I, you, I played better you jinx than a commentator curse. <laughs> Well, this That's one may have, may have been a donation curse. We actually had $25 coming in from Acrostore, who said, in answer to your question earlier about where the monsters are coming from, those monsters came from the moon. They're landing right behind you. Back attack percent time now. Hard love. <laughs> Acrostore, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fun fact. The most back attacks I've ever had in a single Paladin percent run is seven. It's a lot of back attacks. And I think the most uh, we were um, we were told was eight. Yeah. According to sources, the most anyone's ever had is eight, so I almost have world record for that. Not that it's a real category. <laughs> it could be. It could be. If, 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 if Rivers is out there, it could be. <laughs> it could be. I'm gonna make another quick uh, safety save here. Hey, safety saves are the best saves. They are, especially when you're trying to be marathon safe. So we're gonna do that casual thing you do and jump into a waterfall. Maybe that's why Tella wanted our help. He was uh, really concerned about jumping down that waterfall. Could be. It could be. By the way, the best skip is the Rosa skip. Um, if for some reason you forget to talk to Rosa before you come into this cave, tell her to send your butt right back to Kaipo. Yes. <laughs> I have done that many times when I first started learning Paladin Percent. I would be like, oh man, I'm on a PV pace. And then I would get to Tella, would have forgotten to talk to Rosa and just hang my head. All right, so we get to the end of the wonderful area here and now we're gonna be fighting Octomam, who is very fast and has many tentacles. So the first thing we're gonna do is equip this new fancy sword that I went slightly out of my way to pick up because it's very good. We got a crit, that's also good. Uh, and then we're going to give a small child a knife and we're gonna tell her to throw it. So with Optimam- Cause why not? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just saying, cause why not? <laughs> Please do continue. <laughs> um, with Octomam, it basically to knock off the tentacles, it takes a certain number of hits. So the first tentacle gets knocked off in about uh, in three hits, and then each subsequent one gets knocked off in two hits. So um, doing as much damage as quickly as you can at first, because as Spoonie said, this is a very fast boss, um, is super duper important. And the Darkness Sword is actually gone out of the way for it because um, Octomam actually has a weakness to it. Yep, it's real good. And uh, also, for sake of being fast, so Tella 
His turn is slow. His lightning bolts do a really wide variety of damage. A lot of times he gets a lot of roll rolls. So once we have done a couple of lightning bolts with him to kind of help knock off those initial tentacles, we're actually gonna cast stop on him so that Cecil and Rydia get more turns because they deal more damage. Yeah, it's totally possible to kill this boss while, um, while she still has more than one tentacle up, actually. <laughs> And then somehow while Tella is stopped, he is going to tell us that we're doing a good job. Yeah, those dancing daggers are fabulous because they just do so heckin' much damage. <laughs> oh, well, I meant to move the trash can during this, but uh, we got such good rolls on the dancing daggers that I didn't have time. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. Besides, why on earth would you want to move your trash can? Well, I just, I, I like to have it nearby in, in case I need it. <laughs> wink, wink. All right, so now we're gonna swap some characters around and change rows. I'm gonna make another save because I like doing that. It makes me feel better. And we're gonna continue on and, uh, you know, go to Damsian, except Oh no, look who's here. It's the Red Wings! <gasps> They're here to steal another innocent town's crystal! No, unacceptable! Shoot, we were just getting here. And now this is on fire. Everything is always on fire. This is interesting that the fire follows Cecil wherever he goes. But he's still the good guy. Yeah, totally. And now we're going to meet that uh, mysterious bard that Tella was talking about. And what is, quite frankly, in my opinion, the best line of any Final Fantasy in existence happening right now. Don't blink. Use Booty Bard! There it is. That's the whole game. I will take no questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question for you, Spoonie. I want to know, yes. how did Damsian get its name? Ah, well, you see, okay, that's actually a great story. The town of Damsian has been around for a really, really long time. And back in the beginning of its growth, there was a big war between Damsian and some of the other towns. And they had this one very famous samurai. His name was Cyan. And all of the other warriors saw how amazing he was. He was absolutely legendary with his blade. One man even said he watched Cyan cut down 100 men all by himself. And do you know what he said when he saw Cyan cut down all those men? No, what? Damn, Cyan! And that's how the town got its name. True 100% lore facts. I feel this so much is, better educated now. Yeah, this is the kind of canon that the game doesn't tell you. Yeah, it's just, it's really hidden away. Secret knowledge passed down between Final Fantasy IV speedrunners. And I'm sharing it with you. So, uh, anyway... Tella gets really angry at Edward because he blames Edward for the death of Anna, his daughter. Oh yeah, by the way, Anna's dead. Just like everyone else here. Everybody dies in Final Fantasy IV. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, and Edward's like, man, I'm so upset, um, but I know where a thing is that could help your friend. And I obviously can't stay here because my kingdom is falling apart. Our crystal's gone and I lost my love. Goodbye, Anna. You will not get a burial for you're a Final Fantasy character and you will simply blink out of existence. I mean, it, it saves a lot of money though. It does. Also, we get this really cool hovercraft. And we're gonna take it down this way. We're gonna make another quick safety save here. Doodly doo. And we're gonna go inside. Oh, you guessed it, another cave. Are we gonna pick up the safety life today? We are. Okay. <laughs> I know that if I don't pick it up, 
then something is just gonna pop Rydia right in the face. And then uh, you would really just have like all the, all the okay to tell me, I told you so. Oh, <gasps> look, a surprise attack, number two. So while we're going through the caves and dodging surprise attacks, is it a good time for donations? Probably, Absolutely yeah. it is. Yay, we have so many coming in, chat. These are amazing. We have $100 from Aeon Frodo, who was our previous runner, saying, or two runs ago, saying, I think missing a 99.5% hit chance of Lestigia, I'm sorry, I missed that name, is a good reason to donate this much since it's so unlikely to happen. Thanks for having me on and good luck to the ladies closing out the marathon. Hopefully we get some better luck in this run. RPGs can be scary. And then we have a really cute one, $100 from CareBear21, who says, watching Flame Fatales with my daughter. And she told me to donate with the following message. Thank you, GDQ, for your speedruns this week. I hope you do more great speedruns soon. I have loved this marathon. Aww. Well, we're so happy you love the marathon. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We've got plenty more fun runs coming up. Speaking of which, we have $100 from Jimmy Grist, who says, love GDQ, love this community, and can't wait for VVVVVV, which again, chat, we don't have a ton of time to meet. We really need to make some moves on this one. We are under $2,000 away, but it has to be met by the start of the run, which means we only have as much time as it takes Spoonie to finish this to meet that incentive. So keep those donations rolling in. Why do I feel like people are going to be hoping I get better in G so you have more time? <laughs> I don't know what those rolls on, Antlion. Uh, we might be going quicker than we think. <laughs> I went ahead and moved the trash can. I did it. <laughs> so just a, a quick heads up on that antlion fight that just passed by really, really fast. Um, we also gave Edward one of those amazing dancing daggers. So antlion has a little bit of a mechanic where it'll counter any physical attacks. But because we're using the dancing daggers as an item, um, they actually count as magic attacks and they're dancing daggers. So they also do a heck of a lot of damage. So every time we throw them, the antlion mm -hmm. will not counter anything. And it's a nice, quick, easy fight. Yes. And you know, really the antlion's facial expression has always just spoken to my soul. <laughs> He actually might be one of my favorite bosses in any Final Fantasy game because the first time I saw him when I played this game casually, I absolutely lost it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, well, we didn't intend to kill the antlion. Here's the thing. Edward was like, oh, I know about this antlion and it, uh, I, I feel like the, Ruby is basically like an egg. It's basically the antlion's egg. And it's like, hey, can we borrow one of your eggs because it will cure our friend? I guess they like crack it open over Rose's head. I don't really know how it works. But we intend to just ask the antlion nicely if we can have a sand ruby. But you know how the beginning of the game said, oh, why are there so many monsters? Well, everything is angry at all of us. So the antlion got really upset and attacked us. And then we kind of had to kill it out of self-defense. But we got the sand ruby. Hey, we, and now we, we have to save our bay. Take it back to Kaibo. Yeah. While we're walking back, do you have more time for donations? There's so much love coming in for you, Spoonie. Oh, sure. I'm just. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, the best RNG is the fact that the Kaibo hunk's been super nice to me today. That one guy with the musclies that walks in front of the door here, we call him the Kaipo hunk. He usually walks in front of the door like 50% of the time. I don't know why he's being so nice to me, but thank you, Kaipo hunk. And yes, please feel free to read a couple of donations here as we're going through Rose's dialogue about, ah, here are the plans of things, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. We have $100 from Hasmax who says, had to drop in to see the Pally Percent run. Have a great run, you Spoonie Bard. <laughs> we have $20 from Runeborn who says, go Spoonie. And we have $100 from Mushy Broccoli who just says, good luck. We Thank also have so 
We also have $100 from some dude Tempest who says, best of luck with the run, Spoonie. Hopefully no new records on back attacks. <laughs> Thank you, Tempest, for backing me up there. <laughs> so uh, Edward here is now playing his harp. He can't sleep. He's really upset about his girlfriend, Anna, dying, which, you know, to be fair, I would be too, except for, you know, this is Final Fantasy, so he's got to get attacked while he's doing it. So this water hag has, of course, the hit it three times and it dies. The nice thing about having the dancing daggers is the harp Accuracy is so awful, but it's a really good thing be yeah. that it has this trigger because this water hag has 45,672 HP. It's a lot. <laughs> it, would, it would take a while to get rid of it. <laughs> just a little while. So we just stabbed the water hag three times and that's enough to take care of him. Arg! And, you know, Anna tells us about how she wants Edward to be strong. Be strong for Anna. <laughs> and now she's, you know, oh, you loved me and that's great, but you should move on with your life and be strong and amazing and wonderful and not be a coward. And Edward's like, but it's hard. He has a rough time. But I will say, also, fun fact, Edward's name in the JP version of the game is Gilbert. And RPGC and I are familiar with another Gilbert, namely from Legend of Mana. Oh, ooh, ooh, blue dress lady. You, yes, you get out of my way, please. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, the Gilbert from Legend of Mana makes this Gilbert look like the best Gilbert ever in existence. Yeah. Final Fantasy IV's Gilbert, far superior to Legend of Mana's Gilbert. I told RPGC that we could just, like, take a moment to trash on Legend of Mana's Gilbert during this run, and I was totally cool with that. I mean, anytime we trash on, on Legend of Mana's Gilbert is a good day in my book, so... <laughs> I just want to quickly jump in and say, chat, we've gotten over $4,000 toward the doing things the hard way incentive for VVV, VVV. We are making progress, but we need to get to $5,555.55. So please keep these donations coming in. We can do it. By the way, this little cutscene that occurs means that Rosa is the best grief counselor in all existence. Because, of course, mm -hmm. poor little Rydia is all afraid to use fire and it doesn't appear in her spell repertoire at all. But just a few words from Rosa tell her to buck up and, and it'll be fine. And Renee's like, yeah, I got this and cast fire one. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense that she'd be afraid of fire. I mean... She's literally walking around with the man who was responsible for burning down her town and killing her mom. I think I'd be a little afraid of fire too. Yeah, but you know, Rosa just says, be strong, Rydia, you're amazing. And uh, now she knows fire. You know who else is amazing, Spoonie? Chat is karate amazing. Man? Well, Karate Man's oh. kind of amazing, but <laughs> Chat's pretty amazing for all of these donations. I agree. Karate Man says, a chill. Thank you again, Chef, for all of your donations to the Malala Funds. And seriously, I'm trying my best to get my usual terrible RNG, but if we want to hit that the hard way run for V, 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 which I never know how many Vs to say, to be honest, so I just keep saying V until I run out of breath. <laughs> please, 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 we want to see that. Let's get there. Uh, this is going to be another boss fight here. We're going to be helping Karate Man with a little boss called Mom Bomb. Looks pretty unassuming right now, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. It's fine. Just a tiny bomb. Okay, I think I should be all right here. Oh, good. Thank you for not hitting Edward or Rydia. Good, good mom bomb. All right, so now he's gonna start shaking and, and get a little scarier here. Three, two, one, kick. So 
So that is on purpose. We are timing this kick after an explode AOE attack. The and worst to person to die here is definitely Edward, because we really are actually mm -hmm. going to need to defend on him coming up real soon. Yes, we are. We really need him to live. Uh, so basically, we're going to be using the dancing daggers to take out the blue bombs, because they have the most health. And we are going to be using our other melee characters to take out the red bombs. We used Rose's aim to take out the one who took the most damage from Kick earlier. Because otherwise, she doesn't really have the ability to get rid of that. And oh my gosh. Yeah, and after three turns, if you haven't killed them yet, they will also do their own little mini explodes. I think it's three turns anyway. I think that's right. I Oh my god. I, sorry, I was on the edge of my seat because uh, the bombs kept hitting Edward, but he missed at the last minute and Edward lived. Y'all, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Cecil and Edward and Yang all lived. They all got XP. Yay, let's I go. can't believe it. <laughs> Let go, a good mom bomb. Yeah, I, I mean, as much as we, as much as we love Rydia, um, we don't really need her to live through that fight, technically. Yeah, we love Rydia, but this is the last fight that we will have her in our party in Paladin percent. Oh boy, three. Um, I think because this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a bit of a trek from uh, Mount Hobbs over to Kabul, so I think you have a little bit more time for some donations, Char Bunny. Oh, you perfect. sure do. Thank you. We also have some, the safety save again. We have some really sweet ones coming in. We have oh, let me see, fifty dollars from Harane who says. As Charbonne demanded, shout out to my high school English teacher. I know I was a PIA and didn't ever do homework, but this woman is the reason I can call myself fluent in English now. Incentive is to runner's choice. And then we have $300 from Zeta Gundam ZZ who says, This donation is in honor of one of my chef instructors from pastry school, Chef Naz. She did so much to inspire me and my classmates, and I know I wouldn't be the baker I am today without her and her. Also, we must do things the hard way in BVP, and chat, we are making so much progress on that. It's incredible. We're not quite there yet, but we are under $1,000 to go, so please keep those donations coming in. We also have some nice straightforward donations, $25 from Omnijack, who says, you spoony bard. And we have $10 from Agent Snap Crackle, who says, it's so exciting to see you on GDQ, Spoony. Good luck with the run. Thank you all so much for all those donations. All right, so one thing we're gonna do real quick while we're on the bridge, we're going to remove the tiara from Rydia because we love her, but again, we won't actually be using her again in our party. And if I don't unequip the tiara, she actually just sort of walks off with all of the gear she's wearing, which is bad because we will have a character who will want that tiara later. You didn't wanna, um, so, sorry, you didn't want a safety save outside football? Oh, I did. Didn't I? No. I don't think you did. You saved outside of Hobbs, but not outside of Fabul. Well, I guess we'll find out how that goes for us. Well, I mean, it's not a long walk, so you'd be fine. And we won't need it, because you know what? You're going to get through this on the first try. Totally. Um, so we're going to leave Rydia and Rosie here for reasons I still disagree with. But, <laughs> you know, we've got Cecil, we've got Yang, we've got Edward. They all got XP. I'm sure we'll be fine. Uh, this particular part, I may have to do a little more focusing on because we're going to have to do some run buffering. Which I'm hopefully going to get some of. <laughs> Yeah, the run buffering is really, really important as we go through the Fabul Gauntlet, especially because um, we want Edward to make it as far as he possibly can through this Gauntlet without taking a heck ton of damage. Because um, if Edward gets low enough HP that he goes into hide mode, that makes the fights take a heck of a lot longer because number one, we don't have his damage from the Dancing Dagger and we also have to wait for him to like hide, maybe come back, hide again. It's not a lot of fun. 
So ho Very bad. hopefully, especially through the gargoyle fight, because um, after, I think that's also three or four turns, but if you don't kill the gargoyle within a certain amount of turns, basically it starts to use weak on the party, and that's a really not fun time at all. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> So we're gonna have Edward in this particular setup kill the lady at the back, Cecil kills the water hag at the top, and Yang kills the imp because uh, they are one-shottable by Cecil and Yang respectively. And Edward can pretty much one-shot anything with Dancing Dagger, but he's the only one who can use it. So like RBGC said, that is why we really want him to live here. By the way, chat says you save, so you're good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> So that was completely my mistake. No worries at all. I do know that I'm going pretty fast. Heck yeah, you are. All right, we did get the run buffer in there, which is good. We also had one time where one of the guards missed hitting Edward, which was just mm, perfect. So if you notice, I'm doing a little inventory management while we are doing this. Basically, once I've killed the guards or the gargoyle, which is coming up soon, while things are sort of transitioning, while they're like, oh, I'm gonna run away. I have a second there where if I go to the inventory, I won't be slowing down the fight, but I can move things around. And that's gonna be important for later. We'll need those two slots free for something we're gonna be buying. Soon buying percent. Yeah. Da -da 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 dancing daggers. I love. I just love that the speedrun makes makes Edward your just main damage dealer. It is so funny to me. It made my heart soar. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, those of you in the audience couldn't tell, because my name is in fact Spoonie, I did get my name from this game's "You Spoonie Bard" line, which is why I yell it every single time I play the game. Do you have a preferred way to yell it? Because I have some more donations coming up, and I'm curious how you'd like me to read them. <laughs> I mean, any way you like. Well, I'll give this a try if I have a chance. We have $10 from Duel101 who says, You spoony bard! And then we have $100 from Stretch Forest who says, You spoony bard! <laughs> All of those are perfect. I think so. <laughs> We also have a $500 donation from Nightflyer that just says, hi, exclamation point. And chat, we are getting so, hi. so close on this VVV, VVV incentive. We are only about $34 away. Please, almost there. We really want to see this happen. Um, so, hey, by the way, our best friend Kane is here. He's going to help us, right? Kane? Kane, what are you doing, man? Kane. What's wrong? What's wrong, Kane? Why are you stabbing me in the back when I thought you just had my back? Utterly betrayed, Cecil falls to the ground. And it says he perished, but don't worry, we're, we're, we're fine, okay? We're fine. <laughs> by um, by the way, that was an amazing gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I missed a couple of those run buffers, but overall, I'm gonna definitely take that gauntlet. It was a good one. But bad cane luck, unfortunately. Yeah, bad cane luck. So in that fight, um, you'll notice, by the way, Kane's another one of those fights that has like 60,000 health. You can't actually kill him. So what you do is you want Kane to knock you out as fast as possible. So you hit yourself in, in confusion, but not really in confusion. Uh, if Kane hits hard enough, and if Cecil hits himself hard enough, then you can skip a little bit of dialogue and it's faster. But that's all right. Kane and Golbez, this new mysterious person that we've never met before, who gets a really nice evil theme, show up. They take Fabul Castle's crystal and they leave. And somehow the six-year-old child is the only one still standing. She casts Cure, though, and brings us all back up. So this is another reason why Rydia is really great, by the way. Not just because she has green hair and is a summoner. Not that I'm partial to green hair or anything. <laughs> She's just really cool. <laughs> She is the most adult out of all of those people standing there right now. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> if I can jump in some. Oh yeah. Some... Oh, I was just gonna say. By the way, Rosa gets kidnapped. She's not here anymore. I just want to jump in with some really good news really quick. Chat, we have met the incentive for do things the hard way in VVV, VVV. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of those donations. It's going to be so exciting. That is going to be coming up after this run, so make sure you stick around and watch that. But thank you again. That is not all of our incentives today, though. Chat, I'm looking at that number, and we're getting really, really close to 100K. Do you think we can meet that, that by the end of this run? Any chance? That'd be an amazing number to hit. I might faint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for helping us hit the goal for VVVVV. We're getting so close to 100K. Thank y'all so much, seriously, for all the absolutely wonderful, generous donations to the Malala Fund. Um, so basically, we went and talked for a bit. We recovered. We talked to the king, who was still alive, but kind of on his last leg there. And he's like, uh, so y'all really need to stop the Red Wings. You guys need to stop the King of Baron. So I'm going to give you a boat and hopefully you can head them off to the pass. By the way, this is Yang's wife that we're saying goodbye to and she's saying take care. Don't worry, Yang's wife. We'll definitely take care of Yang who, uh, can't swim, as he told us earlier in the game, but I'm sure that won't come up. Bye, Sheila. <laughs> Bye, Sheila. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually didn't ever realize that Yang's wife had a name until I played Free Enterprise, which is the randomizer for Final Fantasy IV. And everybody called her Sheila, and I was like, who is Sheila? <laughs> <laughs> But as we all know, chat, nothing bad ever happens on a boat in a JRPG. Of course not. We're just sailing along. I'm on a boat and it's going fast and everything's totally fine because we're the protagonist. That didn't quite rhyme, but that's all right. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, you know, la 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 boat ride, ba da da ba ba da ba 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 da ba. Everything's going fine. Huh? What's that? Someone's waving at us. Oh hi! I wonder who it could be. Hello! It can't be. Is that true? The master of the seas. That's Leviathan. That's right, everyone. Not Leviathan. Leviathan. Well, that's because he's just... Leviathan's cousin. He's just popping up to get a tan. I mean, come on. It's his yeah. namesake. We got in his way. And now everything is shaking. Man, I sure hope no one falls off the boat and someone not in armor will have to dive in and rescue them so they don't sink. Oh, no! Radia! Yes! There goes Yang. Bye, Yang! Now, of course, Don't worry. the ultimate Cecil question for him. chat. The ultimate question, did Cecil push him? Did he? Are we the bad guys, chat? That's really the biggest debate among Final Fantasy IV runners is does Cecil push Yang off the boat? I am in the firm camp of push. Yes. Agreed. So we wash ashore and nobody's here. And we're sad. Sad music. Combat. And then, oh wait, no, that's right. Uh, I guess once we get into combat, we're no longer sad. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna go to this nearby town, which happens to be, you guessed it, Mysidia! That town where we murdered a bunch of innocent people at the beginning of the game, oof. Um, we're gonna patronize them by buying some stuff. <laughs> and then we are going to immediately go up to the top of town and hope that this white mage does not get in my way. <laughs> yeah. And now uh, we're gonna do what I call dialogue box. Just burr, 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 dialogue go burr. Goodbye, boss.
The elder tells us stuff about, uh, hey, you're that guy who burned down our town. Oh, well, what's that? You found out the King of Baron is actually really evil and now you want to help? Okay, well, uh, we have these, uh, like, five-year-old twins. I forget Palam and Porim's actual ages, but they're really young. They're twins. They're mages. And uh, in order to get through Mount Ordeals, we need magic. We need magic. So the elder, for whatever reason, trusts Cecil with these small children. And we leave. <laughs> Elder was just tired of Palam and Porum, and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna pawn them off on on like, get on, these on kids out of my hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> They're driving me crazy. Teller left them behind. <laughs> the parents are no longer with us. It's your fault. You take care of it. Oh, back attack number five. I think we have a a. a a little bit more time, Char Bunny, for some donations as we get to Mount Ordeals. We sure do. Yay! Awesome! We have $25 from Shadragon, who says, My fourth grade teacher, Mrs. White, did so much to inspire all of the kids in her classes. She fostered that wonder and creativity that stuck with me to today. Also, I'm loving these lore drops in FF4. We have $75 from Crash Override, who says, best of luck, Spoonie. And we have $25 so from Bob, who's specifically requested an old man voice. I will do my best. <clears throat> Yo, Spoonie Ball! Also save the animals. <laughs> save sorry, the Chad. animals! My name is Tella! <laughs> We also have $100 from Thoth, who says, Go Spoonie! Go fast, yeet a man, and take out the trash. Aw, oh, yeah. Man, I wonder why people keep talking about trash. I, I don't know. It must be because you moved your trash can in the inventory. It must be. Meanwhile, at the Tower of Zot, Rosa is tied up, then kidnapped by Golbez and Kane, who is now, oh, you guessed it, evil! Also, um, she is being threatened by, you guessed it, Orb! Orb! In my head canon, it's Ozma. Um, even though I believe in the JP version, it's actually a guillotine, and it's only in the English version they changed it to an orb, because they were like, maybe we shouldn't be threatening Rose's head. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> but I like the orb better, it's funnier. <laughs> So we're, so we're going to be climbing Mount Ordeals here. We are. And uh, we're going to run into an old friend kind of soon. An old friend, you say? Yes, I do. Man, I wonder if they've got a lot of wisdom. I, I hope so. I feel like so. we might need some wisdom climbing this mountain. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, it's Tella. Going the wrong way. Yep. Good job, Tella. Just uh, <laughs> just want to point that out to y'all. Tella was climbing the wrong direction of Mount Ordeals. <laughs> what we need to do without us, really. And the twins are going to continue to be like, oh my gosh, you're the legendary sage Tella. Wow, you're so old. And then they make fun of him and Tella's like, John, you kids, you're worse than that spoony pod. But you need my help. I suppose I'll come help you if you're going to climb Mount Ordeals. I need to go up there and get my magic uh, spaghetti meteos. <laughs> That's a can up there about 30 <laughs> years ago. I hope it's still good. Okay, While we're I really like this that. mountain chat. I want to call your attention to one of our next incentives. We met the VVVVVV one, but did you know that the game after that is Celeste? And we can take that run and upgrade it to all chapters. Uh, it's an incredible run, so you definitely want to see more of it if we can. We are just over $2,000 away from that. So if you were, oh, I know I wanted to donate to something, but I don't know what to donate for, that right there. Donate, hit that incentive. That's the next one we want to meet. We don't have a ton of time for that one either because VVV, VVV is very short and Spoonie is speeding through this. This is my sixth back attack, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is. And it's a terrible one to get because of the fires. 
Yeah, getting the, basically any of the back attacks on Mount Ordeal are pretty awful. So uh, I'm gonna do another safety save here, which I don't normally do, and I'm trying to get a PB, of course, because it's slow. However, we're all about safety here for marathons. So we're gonna take the opportunity also to go ahead and equip people. We're giving Porum the tiara. I also went ahead and, for a little safety, picked up the change rod for Palum. We're gonna give Cecil here his new sword, and then we're gonna save our game. Yeah, Change Rod is very helpful because it will give Palom and Purim's twin attack a little bit more oomph. Yes, because uh, Palom and Purim have this lovely attack called Twin, where they actually cast together and can either cast Comet or Flare. And having the Change Rod just sort of, in general, upgrades the damage. Uh, this is Milan, so this is the guy that, you know, was sent to Mount Ordeals to stop us. Arga blarg blarg, I'm Milan. And we're gonna kill his zombies with Cure 2 potions because it's fast. Yeah, if for some reason we leave the zombies alive too long, uh, Milan will be like, hey, go forth, and then they'll all do train attacks, and it takes a while, and it's slow, and we don't want that. It is very slow. And then once we've cleared out those zombies, we are basically just gonna be parrying with Cecil and Tella, unless one of the twins needs a heal. And we're just gonna chill out and watch them cast Flare. Hopefully Flare, sometimes Comet. Flare is nice because it does a little bit more damage here. It's true. And uh, he really likes hitting Palum today. There we go, there's Lauren Porum. So what's really nice about the Tiara is that if he hits Porum with Lightning, a lot of times it will only hit him for one damage which saves us time. Wow, uh, he really is hitting Palom a lot. That makes me kind of yep. nervous. <laughs> it's fine, we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. You do, I know you do. Clear! All right. Hilariously, even though I picked up the change rod to avoid this, he didn't quite die. So we're gonna hit him with Cecil. Oh my body! If they don't keep that line in the pixel remaster, I'm gonna be very sad. They better. That's one of the best lines in the entire game. All right, so we're gonna do another thing that we don't normally do in PB runs. And after we've defeated Milan, we're gonna go back to this lovely save square. And you might be wondering to yourself, Spoonie, you just fought a boss. You clearly just killed that man. Why on earth would you go save again? Isn't it over? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're also gonna swap Porum and Tella here. And then we're gonna hit change, and you'll you'll see why. We'll make a quick save, and uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here. If you've never seen, oh, seven! <gasps> seven, 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 seven! I tied, oh my god. I can't believe this. I tied my record for the amount of back attacks that I've had in a pally percent run. <laughs> okay, Rivers, this needs to be a category now. <laughs> Listen, I'm having to use all my cure potions. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm gonna laugh so hard if I get a back attack in between this fight and the next one. <laughs> so this is Mylon Z and I'm gonna let Spoony focus on this fight. Um, we're gonna do a really fun glitch for this fight. Um, and what we're gonna end up doing is using Twin to our advantage. So Spoony is gonna do some steps to um, put Palum into what we call kind of a mimic state. So we're gonna end up casting Twin with Porum, but we're going to kind of kill her off before Twin actually has a chance to go off. And we're also going to be doing a thing where Cecil's gonna be using some stuff in the inventory and you'll see Spoonie swapping trash can with that cure too. Once we stop Cecil, Palum basically is like, oh, wait, Twin was activated. What am I supposed to do? Porum's dead. So he ends up, because of that mimic state, he ends up using the last thing that uh, Cecil used, which was 
conveniently our Switch trash can and it gets thrown at Mylon Z. And the game is kind of confused because, well, you're not supposed to be able to use that trash yeah. can that way. And it ends up counting it as the spell holy, or I think white in this game. Yep, that's pretty much it. We throw a trash can at Milan Z's head and he's like, ow, that hurt. And he falls off the bridge and he's never seen from again. Also, we got the poison. Tink, 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 tink. <laughs> Or, you know, as I like to say on my stream, I, I always yell, I'm the trash man! I come out and I throw trash all over the ring! <laughs> I can't not say it. <laughs> so here we are at the last boss of the Paladin Percent run. And Cecil is changing. He gets this magic new outfit. This magic new sword, but then a Dark Knight version of himself comes out of the mirror and he has to fight himself. Now, what we're going to do in this fight is actually a bit different than what you do in the normal game. In the normal game, you're supposed to just defend against the Dark Knight because if you attack, he counters. Um, and essentially, if you defend long enough, he does three dark waves and then it's over and you win. But that's slow, so instead, we're going to take advantage of the fact that dancing daggers count as spells, and we're gonna throw them. Yeah, all of the dialogue that the Dark Knight says at the end of the three turns of parry is just slow. It's slow like this. <laughs> <laughs> I got that unfortunate low roll there, and I, I delayed for just a split second. But you know what, but that's fine. You get more story. That gives you just a few more seconds there. Time to get is any coming last up donations soon, in. though, yeah. Yeah, time is coming up here in just a moment. Last donations, you said? <laughs> or we are about to hit time right here. Okay. And time! Cecil became a paladin. GG! GG! We did it, y'all. We made Cecil a paladin, and now we're totally not the bad guy, right? I mean, look at our really, really amazing hairstyle. <laughs> hey, we're all, we're all bright and light, so we can't be bad guys anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did you have any last-minute lore to throw in, RPGC? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we can... The the fun thing would be to just do uh, an MP Underflow on Tella and just a free a free uh, Meteo, but... <laughs> it's, like a <laughs> it's like a victory lap. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how to MP Underflow. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's like, teach me right now, live on GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that is the end of the Paladin Percent run. Um, I guess just last things to say is like, thank you all so much for watching this run. Um, I do have a few people that I would like to take the opportunity to thank. First off, Natara for inspiring myself and the RPG chick with all of this amazing 100% totally real lore. I'd also like to thank Invenerable, Scala Kitty, and everybody else in the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise and Final Fantasy IV speedrunning communities for being super duper welcoming and helpful and awesome to me throughout everything. Uh, thank you all so much for inviting me to be part of your communities. Uh, thank you to my community for supporting me and picking up speedrunning more seriously. Um, thank you also, of course, to my stellar commentary, the RPG Chick. Aw, thank you and for having me. <laughs> Yeah, and, and thank you last of all the Flame Fatales for this absolutely amazing opportunity. Thank you all so much for letting me run this game here. And uh, thank you for all of your donations to the Malala Fund. Yeah, but if you if anybody is interested in picking up this run or any of the other Final Fantasy runs, as Spoonie said, the community is super welcoming, super duper helpful. Um, and they're just an amazing group of people. And the amount of notes and resources for this run is just it, there's so much of it, and it's there's really so good. There's so many. It, they're all really good. There's so many good, like, just pages of notes, videos. When you get stuck on something, listen, Enven was so nice that when I forgot how to do Miskit for, like, three hours, he, <laughs> he gave me uh, notes, so... 
Anyway, uh, I think that's all for us. We got to get out of here because we've got a, another run coming up soon, don't we? Yes. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Wow, what an incredible run by Spoonie. That was so much fun to watch. Lots going on there. Lots of interesting lore dropping. So chat, hope you were taking notes. We got so many donations, way more than I was able to read, but thank you so much for sending them all in. One donation I'd like to read is $100 from Sierra, who says, As an academic, nothing is more valuable to me than education. Though this amazing run by Spoonie and the upcoming VVVVVV run come dang close. Let's finish this week off in the most amazing way. And with that, we're headed to a quick break, but we'll be back before you know it with incredible games, including VVV, VVV, and Celeste. So please stick around. Welcome back everyone! Thanks for hanging with us. I'm really excited to say that if you've been watching those images across your screen, you'll see that we have some incredible prizes for today, and I think we're gonna go talk about them. So I hope you've been putting your embers towards more bows, because it's time for us to learn more about our incredible prizes and see how those bows for the bow crown have been stacking up. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Flame Fatales 2021. My name is Sent and joining me as always is the wonderful Frozen Fly Gone. Frozen? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? It's almost your run, right? Yeah, I got two back-to-back -back runs actually. Back to, yeah, you're going to do VVV and then Celeste, right? Yeah, I'm super excited. Super excited. I mean, how are you going to get uh, get back home in time for your runs though? It's going to be really hard, right? I know. So we got to, I think we got to stall a little bit after this prize segment and that way I can run home, okay? Got, gotcha. Yeah, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll hold the fort down. All right, thanks. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. You want to tell us about some of these prizes? Yeah, of course. I want to tell you about some of these prizes. We've got some great ones. And remember, everyone, you don't have to donate specifically for the prizes. Just donate at least the minimum donation amount today. You're going to get entered into all of these amazing prizes. $25 is the magic number that's going to get you into everything we are about to talk about. Now, first up, we have Press Start to Translate from the Legends of Localization team. It is a wonderfully cool book. Uh, Clyde Mano Mandolin takes the idea of, hey, why can't you just put an RPG like Final Fantasy IV straight through Google and spit out the results, put it in the video game, call it good? How, how could this go wrong? Um, well, it, it could go very wrong. So uh, here, uh, Purim tells Pelham, the Elder has taught us not to behave with arrogance. 
Google has translated that to Purim. The enema is saying that you should not wear a basketball. Um, okay. Th- that is a translation. <laughs> But then uh, what Mado does is he, he breaks it down. He takes a look at what actually went wrong there. And this is one of the funniest ones in the book, honestly. Uh, you know, he takes a look at it and says, the original Japanese text actually clears up a lot of the mystery. Uh, the word choro means elder in situations like this. But apparently there is a separate word that has the exact same pronunciation that means uh, the connecting tract between the gastrointestines and the other bodily organs. I see. Which is how we're getting that link there. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, takaburu, to behave conceitedly, was incorrectly identified as the word kaburu, meaning to wear on the head. Sure. So in, instead of behaving poorly, they're talking about wearing something. Um, Having however, a basketball. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> his last paragraph is, I've, I've tried many things and I have absolutely no idea why <laughs> there's a basketball in this. <laughs> Alternate translations have come out of Google, such as "You said hero not to be covered with chopsticks," and the hedge <laughs> says that you should not hear. I mean, I think that really just shows the amount of work that the localizers have to do to make sure that it's accurate to the game experience. Exactly, it is such an important job, transliteration uh, and translation. And this book really goes into detail about the finer points in it and why machine learning just isn't quite ready for it. Super, super cool read. And again, only a $5 minimum donation. Huge shout outs to the Legends of Localization team for providing that. Now, uh, I think from Wolf Shadow, we have a really yes, nice piece of jewelry, we don't we? We do. We just had, you know, we had a curvy run a little bit ago and we've got a little curvy bracelet. We've got pink, yellow, green, blue, and white curvy. What's your favorite curvy color? Oh, I, I'm a fan of the OG Kirby. Okay, uh, Which okay. I guess technically is white Kirby from the, the game. Did the Game Boy game come out before the NES game? Don't I, ask me. I, I never. I didn't. I didn't have a console until the Wii. I, I, I genuinely <laughs> don't know, but I'm. I'm a fan of of classic pink Kirby, Player One Kirby, and Smash. That is the Kirby that I love. All right. But all the Kirby's there are yes. represented. So pick out your favorite one, and it's only a ten dollar minimum donation for that bracelet. Huge shout outs to Wolf Shadow for sending it out to us. Thank you so much, and we have. A prize from Pokemon, one of my favorites, of course. We got a Pokemon Yellow Etch-a-Sketch battle scene. Oh, yeah. This, oh, my goodness. It, I love the detailing on this. It's, it's so cool, right? Like, it's the battle scene, almost like two screens. You have yep. the Game Boy screen and then the Game Boy controls itself, both done on an Etch-a-Sketch and then both transferred to a print with a cool Pokemon Yellow theme Yeah, background. we got the border. Yeah. Pikachu's like dancing on the side. It's, Super adorable. It's great, right? And I, I love that it comes it inside, you know, the acrylic laminated case. So like, it's not going to bend. Yeah. It's not going to warp if you have it in like a hot or a cold environment. It comes with its own stand and it's its own custom wood stand. So it's not like, you know, you're just propping a photo stand up on it. Yeah, it's absolutely. a nice showpiece and it's only a $10 minimum donation. Yeah. Thank you so much to Science Chub and Grave Ash for donating this to us. I it's, love it. It's super cool. Thank you both so much for sending that out to us. Now, from Kinda Nerdy Housewife, we have a collection of eight Final Fantasy IV parlors, the characters we just saw in that amazing paladin run from Spoonie. And you know what? I was memeing a bit earlier, but let's see if we can actually correctly identify I believe all the in you. This I time. believe. All right. So, of course, we've got the protagonist. We've got Paladin Cecil, yes. right? Yes. You got to have Cecil if you wouldn't mind holding him frozen. Of course. And, of course, we have maybe the more unscrupulous Kane Highwind here. Mm hmm. Is I he love, good or evil? I love the color palette. On it's this so sprite. good. The, the blending yes. is beautiful. The melt is incredibly smooth. Yes. These are wonderfully done parlors. Now, we've got the Summoner Rydia here. Looking great. Big fan. I love her hair. And though my characters are certainly spoony, they could never be as spoony as everyone's favorite Bard Edward. <laughs> we've got Rosa joining the gang here. As well as, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I cannot tell Pelham and Purim apart, no. but I know that both of them are represented here and are looking adorable. And they're both pretty awesome. They're both great. We've got Yang the Monk, and then rounding, whoops, rounding out this. the crew, we have Tella the Sage. You get all eight of these lovely perlers. In fact, there are nine of them. I can't count, but I can <laughs> tell you that these are only a $15 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Kind of Nerdy Housewife for sending them out. They are incredible. And you know what else is only a $15 minimum <gasps> donation? What is it? It is this lovely painting from Puzzle P. <gasps> oh my goodness! 
is. It's it's Kirby themed. Puzzle P has declared this painting Rick rolled, and I love it because this painting is never gonna give you up. It is <laughs> never gonna let you down. It is the perfect painting. No, seriously, it's great. We got Kirby's animal companion Rick. I think my personal favorite of the animal companions. Cause come on, it's a giant hamster. How so can cute. you not love Rick? Rolling Kirby on the umbrella, uh, like Rick does when you have the umbrella power up in Kirby's Dreamland Three. Super adorable painting from Puzzle P. Love Puzzle P style here. Love all of the detail you've got. Yes. And it's a little hard to see, but the uh, the sky and the clouds are covered in glitter right now. Oh, yes. Super can, sparkly. Yeah, you you can course. see it sparkled in the light there. It is absolutely wonderful. $15 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Puzzle P for sending that out to us. Absolutely. And we talked a little bit about a Pokemon price earlier. We've got another one here. And I absolutely love this chainmail Pokemon art. Like, look at this. I don't even understand how you would start to make this. You want to explain a little bit about how it works? Yeah. So, I mean, this is a piece of chainmail art. It is hundreds of links, you know, little circles of chainmail that have been meticulously plied open, attached to other links of chainmail, and layered together to make a pattern. In this wow. case, a Pokeball. It is super time, uh, you know, it's super time extensive art. You got to yes. put a lot in to make even just a small piece like that happen. It's, you know, super hard, obviously. You got to plan it out, but it's not just like, you know, sticking uh, pegs on a board or anything or sticking, you know, pieces of glass down on a flat surface. You're building your canvas You're putting as all the you are, you know, together. designing it, That's right? That's amazing. It's, it's so cool because the canvas is the artwork. That's what makes Chainmail I've, amazing. I've never I seen it. anything like this before. It's, it's, it's super so unique. cool. And it's only a $20 minimum donation, right? It is. In fact, it's only a $15 oh. minimum donation. Even better. We did say that math is hard. Math is very difficult, but you know what isn't difficult? Donating at least $15 it really is. to get this absolutely beautiful chain mail piece. Thank you so much to Doggy Stars Jewelry for sending that out to us. Yes, thank you very, very much. And, uh, I, you know, I know we were talking about you're going to have a Celeste run a little bit later. So we have a couple of paintings featuring uh, two of the main characters. I'd call them both the main yeah, characters yeah. of the game, right? Yeah, so we have some paintings donated to us by Lydia. Thank you so much. And for a $20 minimum donation, you get the set of the Madeline and Madeline paintings. They're looking at each other. You know, they've got their classic, the red hair and the purple hair. The expression is just so beautiful. You can check out what it looks like at Games Done Quick Dot com. Go to the price tracker and see the picture of it. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Definitely go check out that picture. They're about yay big each. Uh, they're oil. I believe they're oil on canvas paintings. They look fantastic. Thank you so much, Lydia. And they're a Thank $20 you. minimum donation together. Now... <gasps> flopping in yes splashing onto the screen <laughs> here we have one of my absolute favorite prizes this beautiful magikarp amigurumi from server puppy it's adorable i love it so much and uh she was sending the progress of it throughout the week in the ff server and so we got to see it come to life and i loved seeing it here it's it's so cool her work is inspirational i mean again this is basically like a singular yes. crocheted piece around a, you know, a fluffy pillow. It's incredible. It's I, how, how do you do this? It's, I, I have no idea, but all I can say is thank you for donating this wonderful friend who I love so much. Thank the air. President, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give yes. it to you. $25 minimum donation. I know it's going to be hard to get the Magikarp out of Frozen's grasp, but you can <laughs> with a $25 minimum donation to Flame Fatales. Uh, and last but not least, we have a, another really cool prize here, also for a $25 minimum donation uh, from Cupcake Kadekery. We have this lovely PSA 10 rated Ashes Pikachu card from the Pokemon I Choose You movie. Aww. You know, when it was in theaters, as a tie-in promo, you got your very own Ashes Pikachu card. And that's been... A long time ago at this point. Yeah, absolutely. So this is still a mint card as rated by the PSA organization in a protective case for you. It's super cool. I've seen a retail, you know, somewhere around $100, $150. It could be yours for a $25 minimum donation. Add it to your Pokemon card collection. Give it to your friends that like collecting cards. Do whatever you would like for it. Just make sure to get your donations in for it today. Now, if you do get that $25 donation in, and you definitely should, that's going to put you at least a quarter of the way towards our cumulative grand prize. So if you haven't donated at least $100 total throughout the event, you definitely should today. And why should they do that, Frozen? Because that's going to enter you for our grand prize of a PlayStation 5. Of course it is. Yes, we have it right here. It's oh. actually it's, <laughs> it's in this box that tells you what it is. That's wonderful. 
You'll get the box and you'll get the PlayStation 5 inside. The, the PlayStation 5 is more important than me. That's why I'm holding it in front of my face. <laughs> and it's very heavy and it, I would probably fall over if I tried it, to hold it up like that. It, it is. I, I do want to point out this isn't like a prop. This isn't, no. you know, someone's <laughs> empty box we found. You can, it's not hollow. This is a PlayStation 5 right here. Could be yours. $100 cumulatively throughout the event. And Frozen, where should people go if they have any questions about not just prizes, but, you know, anything going on with Flame Fatales? Yeah, to check out the schedule, the incentives. Again, the prizes were a bit biased. Yeah, you, know, you know, everything that you need to see, you can find at gamesdonequick.com. Head to the tracker. It has all those options available to you on our way to 100000 for Malala Fund. Oh, my goodness. It's incredible. <laughs> and remember that every single dollar counts and that every dollar is going to Malala Fund and all of the amazing work they do all around the world creating future for girls and women everywhere. Yes. Um, so thank you all so much for everything you've donated. And please keep those donations coming because, like I said, every single dollar matters. Now, I think... We are just about done here, so we're going to kick back. We're going to get ready for our uh, next runs coming up here um, by someone named Frozen Flygon. I'm not really sure. Oh, right. That's... Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. For I'll, I'll stall. You You go okay. home and get okay. ready. Okay. Yeah, 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 just, just go. Don't, right. don't worry. I got, I got. Okay, so I'm thinking... Oh, wait. She's already... You're, you're, you're doing them right here? Oh. Yeah, I'm uh, doing right here. All right. I, I guess we're good. Um, Wow, oh my goodness, every single one of those prizes looks so incredible. I definitely need to make sure I get my donation in. And speaking of donations, we have $30 from Miria who says VVV VVV means 30, right? And you know, I think that's true. And you know what else, chat? I pulled out my calculator during the last break and I counted very carefully and I realized that $100,000 has six digits in it. VVV VVV has six letters. Coincidence? I think not. Let's get to 100K. I wonder if we can do it before the start of the next run. We are so close, everyone. Please help make it happen. We have, of course, plenty more donations coming in. I have $100 from Dragonista who says, donating in honor of all the teachers at the Hartford Heights Gate Center for teaching us about science and computers from an early age. Otherwise, I wouldn't be enjoying video games like this decades later. Thanks for a great marathon, Frame Fatales. Thank you for your donation. We also have $50 from Wombutt who says, thanks for the great event and cause. Loved playing VVV, VVV, excited to see the run. And I am excited to see the run too. Chat, you donated for a really awesome incentive, but did you know there's more incentives coming up? The run after this, Celeste, has an incentive to upgrade to all chapters. That means more Celeste, more gameplay, and more marathon. We are getting close, but we're not quite there yet. We are just under $1,000 away from our $5,000 goal. So please help us get there. And of course, every single one of these donations is also going toward our cumulative total, which we are working to get to 1,000, oh, sorry, let me try this again, $111,111, which means that Celeste would get to, or Madeline in Celeste would get to wear a crown. That sounds incredible. I don't know about you, but I want to see that happen. I've never seen that before. That sounds so exciting. So please keep those donations rolling in. And again, there have been so many. I'm so sorry I can't read them all on air, but it's incredible to watch all this generosity. We have $121 from Crunch Prank who says, being a husband to an amazing wife and stepfather to two beautiful girls, I can't put into words how much I appreciate women coming together, supporting others and their communities. This is not my first GDQ event, but it is my first Frame Fatale event. I could not be happier to donate to such a wonderful group of women doing wonderful things for a cause I care deeply about. My two girls are fortunate enough to have had a great education, but that can't be said for countless others. Thank you GDQ, FF, and Malala for everything that you do. And chat, we are raising money for Malala Fund. This is helping with women's education worldwide. This is such a good cause. I know that 
I depended on my education to get me to where I'm at in life. I was so fortunate to have amazing teachers helping me out along the way. I really appreciate them and I want this for everyone. Oh my goodness, chat, so I'm watching that number. We are getting so incredibly close to that 100K. Chat, please keep the donations rolling in. Oh, this is exciting, it's so close. And keep in mind, we're already at the highest donation total ever in a Frey Fatales event. So every single one of your donations is setting a brand new donation total record for this event. So every time you do that, you are for a brief moment until the next person donates the world record holder in terms of max donation percent. So please keep those coming in. We have $25 from Anonymous who says, first time watching an event outside of the main GDQ events. Love the cause we're donating to and I can't wait to see more from the GDQ team. Let's hit that Celeste goal. And please, let's hit the Celeste goal. We also have $100 from Zen Zero who says, I am loving the energy of this marathon. Woo! I agree, the energy's been fantastic in chat. I see it, we hit 100 dollars raised from Alala Fund in just this week. This is absolutely incredible. This is, again, the most we have ever raised. Congratulations to everyone. All of you who donated, you made this happen. Whether it was $5, $10, or $100, you were part of this. This is so amazing. I cannot thank you enough for all of your support. Please give yourselves all a pat on the back, a round of applause, everything. This is incredible. Thank you so much for all of this amazing support. Oh, I feel like I need to catch my breath. I'm so excited, everyone. This is so great. Thank you all for your donations. And we do get a lot of donations without comments as well. So shout outs to $100 from Anonymous, $100 from Blarlac, and $250 from Anonymous. We cannot read everything alive. And a lot of you are just giving us generosity. And that is perfect. That is exactly what we need for this event. Your support, your help, your generosity is what's getting us to where we're at. This is absolutely an incredible experience for everyone here, and I'm hoping that you're enjoying it as well. Oh, I just checked in on Celeste Custom Maps. We are really making progress there, everyone. The upgrade to all chapters incentive is at $4,694 out of a needed $5,000. We are so incredibly close on that. Please keep those donations rolling in. We do need to meet that before the start of Celeste. And as you can see from the estimate, there is not a lot of time on BVV, BVV. This one is going to go by blazingly quickly, even with getting that extra challenge that we donated for. So I'm really excited to see that one happen. And with that, we are going to be ready for this next run. It is going to be a fun one. I hope you are ready for a vivacious, vibrant, valiant, vexatious, variable, and victorious race between Uni and Frozen Flygon as they go head-to-head -head in VVV, VVV, No Out of Bounds. Good luck!